Hey guys, it's Kelsey and I'm back with layout six for how to kill a kit with style August. So this is a paper issues challenge. This is the take five. I went ahead and highlighted the five things I ended up pulling in. We could choose from any of these 12. We just had to make sure we incorporated at least five of them. Um, and I am really getting down on paper pad, you guys. I struggled on this one. For some reason, even though these papers obviously go together because they're from the same collection, I was really fighting with myself using them together because they didn't feel like they went to me. Um, and it was probably just me, but this black and white pineapple, I don't think there's any other paper that has black in it. And for whatever reason, that was throwing me off because I have white in a lot of the other patterns, but not black. But I do go ahead and decide to use this as my background. This is how to kill a kit with style. You gotta use it. I don't want it to go to waste. I want it to get used up. So I go ahead and just decide to use it as my 12 by 12. And then I just, you'll see me incorporate a few things to kind of make it feel like it belongs more, if that makes sense. I am getting four photos on here. They were four by sixes. I decided to trim them down a little bit so I can run them um, as a strip across the page. So it didn't use up so much real estate as if I were to use all like full four by sixes. So that kind of helps a little bit. Um, this is from the Honolulu Zoo, which was super fun. I'm gonna start by layering this stripey piece. I did pull in stripes from the Take 5, so that's going to go ahead and get that marked off my list. It also pulls in all the other colors from the collection, so I feel like having that rainbow stripe gives me the freedom to add more of the other scraps with it helping to make sense. It looks really weird to me at first because the black and white pineapple is throwing me off, but. I will address that in a minute. Right now I'm just going through some scraps and just trying to layer up a few pieces just to kind of give me something to start my design. Um, I really like the uh, flamingos in this little green scrap, the way they look kind of staggered up right there. It kind of gives me a place to start with embellishing. Uh, this is the only photo I have with a flamingo. So flamingo things are getting on here. The scrap of the flamingo is getting on here. My army of flamingos I still have in my die cut set is getting on here. We need to use them up. This is the one page with the flamingo. They all need to get on the page so they're not left over. I also had a fourth picture that had like, it, it's really cool. I just fussy cut that little rectangular piece you see to the right of the layout. It's a sign that says Honolulu Zoo. This is the best zoo to be found for 2300 miles in any direction and then it just says three feet above sea level and it has the latitude longitude which i think is really cool and then below that it did have a bunch of those directional signs pointing to the different places around the world it pointed to um, all the different zoos that were the closest and then how many miles they were which of course were like 2700 miles and more <laughs> which i thought was really funny because of course hawaii is you know an island in the middle of the pacific so of course it's going to be the best zoo for however many miles when there's no other zoo you know <laughs> close to them but i wanted to incorporate that i think that was a fun fact and it was kind of you know a cool little thing to see um so that piece is going to sit to the side until i figure out what to do with it i have a few scraps of this florally paper so i decided i would just fussy cut these florally sections to kind of have as embellishment spots um, so that takes me a minute. I thought I sped this up more than I did, but apparently I didn't. <laughs> so you guys can see it. It looks really impressive when you speed up fussy cutting. And this is sped up. <laughs> it's not as sped up as I usually do it for you guys, so you don't have to sit and watch. Um, but it looks really impressive when you fussy cut and you speed it up a whole lot. So this kind of shows you this is sped up a lot and it still looks really slow. So. Just so you know, I am not superwoman. You guys like when I fussy cut, but it is not as easy as it looks when it's all sped up. That's the moral of the story. That's what I'm trying to get to. I'm almost done with this piece though. Um, that's gonna go in the bottom right hand corner just because that's the corner of the page I'm fussy cutting this from. It already has that corner edge. So I wanna make sure that makes sense and I'm not gonna have this random hard edge into the page. So I'm just gonna tuck it in the corner the way it already looks and I'm gonna start using that as an embellishment cluster. I thought about doing it above the photos, again, would work because I'm covering up those edges by having it run into some other edges. But in the end, I really like how it looks on the bottom right of the page. So that's where it ends up going. <clears throat> There's this other piece too that has another frond in a corner. I decided I was gonna fussy cut that as well and just tuck it into 
the other bit I already fussy cutted just to add a little bit of dimension and extra layery bit to the floraliness. In the end, I think I almost entirely cover up this piece I'm fussy cutting right now because I ended up tucking things in between those two layers and I am pretty sure I covered up almost all of it, but oh well, it gets on a page, uses up some more paper. <laughs> I'm really trying to kill this kit now. The rest of the pages from here on out using this collection, I don't know how many more I'm gonna be able to squeeze out, but they're gonna be a hodgepodge of patterns because I am trying to use the rest of this paper pad and for whatever reason the patterns left, I don't feel like go together. So it is what it is. That's part of what happens when you try and kill a kit and you leave kind of awkward patterns all for the end, I guess. <laughs> but it'll be fun. We'll see what happens. They'll look a little crazy maybe, but I like how this one turns out even though you know, the patterns to me, I was kind of like, you don't seem like you belong with this, but I just deal with it. <laughs> and here are my army of flamingos. I I wanted to get at least three of them on here. <laughs> I have seven there. Why did they give you so many flamingos? <laughs> I don't understand. Um, I've already used some flamingos on other pages too, so that's not even like all of them that I had. But with us getting to the end of this paper pad, I don't want these flamingos left over, so we'll see. <laughs> I'm just trying to tuck that one layery bit in behind there without you seeing other things. I thought it looked really cute having a little flamingo standing in these florally sections. And then I was like, well, let's just keep adding flamingos. <laughs> so I ended up just clustering three down there together. I mean, they usually are all clustered together. If you go to the zoo and you see flamingos, they kind of are in little clusters. So it's like, you know what? We're just gonna do a little herd of flamingos down there. I'm getting three of them used up. It's happening. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue them down. I have one of the smaller flamingos. I do end up putting that up on some foam that adds a little bit of dimension. Um, and it kind of looks like it's a baby flamingo next to the mommy and daddy flamingo. So that's really cute. <laughs> but again, just trying to use up flamingos here clustering three together, it's done. Um, I like that little cluster. And then that kind of gives me a reason to layer up the other flamingos somewhere else. So already I'm kind of thinking I want to do a diagonal design leading up to the layery area I have with the other scraps on the upper left hand corner. So this is kind of where I'm gonna start building, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this glue down first and just see what it looks like from there. <laughs> but I, I do look how they look all clustered together. I think it looks pretty cute. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off his little bottom here that's hanging off of the page. And then we will start looking at the other area. <clears throat> I know I want more layers in this upper left-hand corner, but I'm not quite sure what. So I'm just gonna see what the flamingos look like if I start clustering them. I kind of like that it mimics the little herd on the bottom. I was just gonna do two and then I was like, you know what? <laughs> Let's just use them all. So I just put a whole little ladder of flamingos over there. I thought about just doing two separate clusters like this. I do like how that looks, um, but I decided to go more for a diagonal design and have all four of them in the same area. So we will see that how that looks in a minute. I know I need more. It looked really weird with the flamingos there because it looked too empty, needs more stuff to sit on and things around it. So I'm gonna put them aside so I can do a little bit more layery stuff. I like how that one corally stripe looked because it was the same color as my flamingo die cuts, but for whatever reason, it did not look good next to that black and white, or not black and white, black and pink paper. So I take it off again. I'm gonna go ahead and glue down. Um, Oh, this is why I decide, okay, I need to pull this black in more so it makes sense because it's throwing off the rest of my layering. So I pull in this butter butterfly washi that's black and white. I pull in a diagonal stripe that's black and white. That way I'm pulling the black into more of the other areas of the pages. That way the black makes sense more. It was weird to me that the background had black in it and nothing else had black in it. So that really helped me connect that paper with the rest of these layers by adding this washi that also had black into it more into the center of the page. So after I did that, I think that helped a lot. I'm gonna go ahead and put some foam on this little Honolulu Zoo sign and stick it up. Um, that's gonna be kind of part of my title. Not really. I'm gonna use it as part of my title. It kind of tells you where we are and all the information. I don't really need to do any journaling other than that. It's kind of self-explanatory, which I really like. I really like when the photos can kind of tell you the stories without needing much explanation. Um, so I'm gonna try and figure out where it goes, but I end up putting it back to where I had it initially. I really like where it looks over that first photo 
with this cute little fox thing. He's adorable. <laughs> so that's just, yeah, I don't think, uh, I don't think I stick it down yet. I wanted more black because it was still looking like not enough. I had painted this white doily black with just some acrylic ink a while ago to use with another collection. And then I ended up only using a piece of it. So I had this scrap left over. So yes, I decided to tuck that there. That brings the black into another area. Um, and I think that kind of helps balance the background. I'm happy after I do that. And I know I'm gonna layer some stuff on top of it so it's not so like in your face, giant black doily. <laughs> um, I end up wanting to put a tag over it like I usually do when I have a doily. I really love putting tags on doilies together. So I end up making a tag out of another scrap of paper. I have some reinforcements that Ronnie had also sent me. So I just popped the black one on there with some black and white twine. And I think that really kind of helps draw all the black together. It makes sense to me now. It's not something I would normally do with a tropical collection to emphasize black, but with that pineapple paper, that's what helped me make sense with it. So that's what happened. <laughs> and now I just want to cluster the flamingos in again. Now that I have the tag, I'm thinking about clustering them around the tag. Um, so that's kind of where they're going to start. And then I kind of trickle them up in a diagonal pattern which I think looks pretty cool. It's unusual that there's that many flamingos, but I think it's kind of a cool look. It's unexpected for me because that's not something I would normally do. So I think it's kind of fun. Um, so yes, going to glue them down. <laughs> I need to start committing. I really like how these flamingos look clustered together in these pairs. I think that's adorable. Um, so yes, I'm putting the sign over the legs though because it's driving me crazy being able to see through their legs. So <laughs> that's why I got the sign over the legs and now I'm trickling these two up. So yeah, that's how those go. I'm glad I got the flamingos used up. <laughs> I think I have one flamingo left, but it's from the On Trend 2 collection. So it's not the same type of flamingo as these and it would have looked weird putting it with these because it's very obviously a different style. <laughs> Um, but yeah, at least I got all of these used up. I'm really pleased with myself. I wanted something else to kind of anchor this section though. So I did cut a little banner out of a scrap piece of green and that went behind there. I'm trying to think about what else. I still need to do the rest of my grab five or honestly, cause that's, that's what I need. Um, puffy stickers was a big one. So I pulled back in the puffy sticker sheet. One of the things I pulled in was the word fun was on the take five and there happened to be a yellow fun and there is yellow in the sign that says Honolulu Zoo so I thought it might be interesting to try and pull yellow in somewhere else in the end I tried to take it off and it wouldn't come off without tearing the paper so in the end I kind of wish I didn't use the yellow but the yellow is there to stay so it's okay it gets the word fun on there there's yellow in the layout even though it's not really in the pattern papers it's in the photos so I think it still is okay <laughs> gave me an excuse to use these puffy hearts again so got those on there as well. So I'm trying to look at my take five elements. One of them was stickers, which I'm using as my heart puffy stickers. Um, stripes is that stripe pattern paper I used. The word fun is in the puffy sticker I used there on the bottom. So I still need to use enamel dots. I had two of these orangey, corally, salmon-y, flamingo colored enamel dots left. So I popped one next to each of the puffy hearts and then I needed some mist. So I did Wait, did I do, yes, I did a little bit of pink mist in each of the corners. So here are the close-ups, that's my take five. Got another How to Kill a Kit with Style layout done. Um, yeah, the rest of the pages are gonna be tricky with this kit, you guys, so we will see what happens. Thanks guys so much for watching, bye.